Welcome to Zote Foams for a tour of our 100 year old foam manufacturing process using high pressure autoclave technology. I'm Carl Hewson, Director of Technology and Development here at Zote Foams PLC. The process starts with the silo delivery of polymer granules. The polymer granules are fed from the silo into a hopper on an extruder where they're mixed with any other additives that we want, such as colour or flame retardants. They're fed into the extruder, where they're heated, melted and mixed, before being extruded through a die into a sheet form onto a belt. The extruded sheet passes onto a belt and underneath a hot oven. As it passes through the oven, it's heated to a higher temperature still, where a chemical reaction occurs called cross-linking. At the end of the oven, the sheet comes out and is allowed to cool. Once it re-solidifies, at the end of the extruder, it is trimmed to the correct size. And we have a finished cross-linked sheet of polymer solid polymer. Our finished foam products tend to be two meters by one meter dimension. Because we have different products with different foam densities, a foam that is going to be 50 kilogram per cubic meter starts off as a slab that's bigger than a foam that's going to be 24 kilogram per cubic meter. So at the extrusion stage, we have to cut the slabs to an appropriate size. Smaller slab, bigger expansion ratio, lower density. During the expansion process, the foam becomes very tacky because it's melted. To stop it sticking and to allow it to slip, we have to use a release agent. Because our customers use adhesives, we cannot use the traditional silicon or fluoropolymer release agents. So we use a talcum based coating. Each of the slabs is sprayed with a talcum powder that's washed off at the end of the process. These are the high pressure autoclaves, the core technology of Zofoams. The vessels are precision engineered to withstand Pressures of nitrogen up to 670 bar, which is 10,000 PSI, at temperatures up to 250 degrees C. So the carriage is loaded into the autoclave, then the operators come here and set the correct program going, which is all PLC controlled. The initial part of the cycle is to purge the vessel of any oxygen by pressurizing with nitrogen and releasing to atmosphere. Once we've removed the oxygen, the whole of the vessel is pressurized with nitrogen gas up to what we call the soak pressure. At the same time, we heat up to what we call the soak temperature. When we've achieved soak conditions, the right temperature and the right pressure, we then hold it there for a long period of time while the gas soaks in from the outside all the way to the middle. This takes a long time, many hours in the autoclave. But once we've achieved equilibrium, we then rapidly depressurize. This is like releasing the cork from a bottle of champagne. The gas that's dissolved in the liquid suddenly comes out of the liquid and forms little gas bubbles. But unlike champagne, we don't release it to atmosphere, we release it partially above atmosphere so those little bubbles form, but they don't expand. Once we form the bubbles, we cool the vessel down while retaining pressure in the vessel. That stops expansion, but refreezes the polymer, so the polymer is now solid. Once it's refrozen, we can release the pressure and no growth occurs. So we end up with little bubbles dispersed within the solid polymer, but it looks essentially the same size as it did when we first put it into the vessel. 
we can then remove those slabs from the vessel ready for the next stage. So when the slabs are removed from the high pressure autoclave, they've got pressurized gas in them. We have about 24 hours to use that gas to expand the slab into foam at room temperature. If we freeze it, we have a lot longer. We can actually ship it to North America and expand the slabs in North America. But today we're in Croydon. So within 24 hours, the slabs are loaded into another carriage, a much bigger carriage with a shelf that's two meters by one meter, by about 50 millimeters thickness. It allows the full sheet of foam to expand and grow into it. So the solid slabs are loaded directly into the middle of that carriage. The carriage will hold over 100 sheets at a time. We then have the low pressure autoclave. The low pressure autoclave is a much bigger vessel because it's taking lower pressures. We typically have about 20 bar, 250 psi. At the beginning of the cycle, the doors open. When the doors open, the carriage is dragged inside the hot vessel. The doors then close and the vessel's immediately pressurized to 250 psi again. That pressure is a counter pressure that stops the gas escaping from the slabs. We can then heat up the slab to above the melt point. That softens the slab. This takes about an hour. So the slabs sit there in the vessel for about an hour, heating up until they're melted under this counter pressure that stops the gas escaping. After about the hour, we can release that counter pressure and the soft polymer is expanded by the expanding gas that's been dissolved in it into a sheet of foam. The door of the autoclave is then opened again, the carriage is dragged out and the hot foam is left in a siding to cool down. So when the foam comes out of the autoclave it's hot and molten. You feel how soft it is ready for thermoforming. It doesn't burn your fingers because it's an excellent thermal insulator. This will sit in the cooling bays with air being drawn across it to cool it down and turn it back into a solid piece of foam. After cooling, the sheets are unloaded from the low pressure autoclave and the talc coating is washed off. The clean sheets and then inspect it before being wrapped and packed. Each batch of foam undergoes a series of quality control tests. So our 2000 by 1000 by 50 millimeter thick LD24 sheet was made from a slab of this size which is about a three and a half times expansion in each of the length, width and thickness. After wrapping, the pallets are transferred to the warehouse ready for dispatch.